<laughs> Welcome back, guys. I'm just giggling at the banter in the lobby <laughs> because <laughs> Stefano wants to be pink and TT1 wants to be red. So, <laughs> lucky us. We get to cast pink versus red. Oh, Stefano versus TT1, Kev. Dare I ask you for a prediction? Uh, well, Ben, I'm going to play it safe here, and I think Stefano's going to You don't think TT1's going to go too well? Uh, I know, man. Those two base all ins, he's pretty good with them. Uh, TT1, one of my friends that I love to discuss two base all ins with. TT1 and Bling, my uh, two favorite two base all ins, <laughs> all in friends against Zerg. But uh, no, I'm gonna go with Stefano. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to sell it to me very nicely, man. Yeah, uh, well, you know, yeah, I you I have I a past as a salesman. I, I, I already lost that first one, you know. So I'm yeah. down 0-1. I need you to, I need you to miss pick one there, so <laughs> so we can. Uh, so we can get it right, guys. Our game is live, so we're going to jump into the game uh, any second now so that you guys can see can all the cool things that we can see. Can I already spoil you guys? First map, once again, it's going to be played on TPW yeah. Odyssey. Yeah. The way that uh, that our format works, we have one opening map per play day. Mm -hmm. This week it is Odyssey. Every game will start on Odyssey. And uh, and that's how, it, that's how we roll, man. That's how we roll. So there we go. We can see Stefano spawning on the left side of Odyssey. And TT1 wearing red. In the, uh, I guess we can say the bottom right side, ish, ish. Little ZVP action, Kev. My favorite matchup to cast with you, bro. Same here, Ben. Same here. Unfortunately, it's not Taldrim Alter. Yeah, exactly. I was about to go there, man. If only it was Taldrim, I would have really felt at home already. But uh, so far, so good, man. I'm pretty satisfied. Me, too. Stefano versus TT. Man, how sick would it be if TT1 just like rocked the world? Like plays two like 50 minute macro games and wins them both. I mean, what we can say about TT1, he's been in Europe for a little while. He's been practicing a lot. He was mostly preparing for the IPL, but it was of course um, uh, it was really hard for himself to make a really good name for, uh, throughout that open bracket. Just sickly hard. So oh yeah. uh, we didn't really get to see what TT1 really has to offer us, and you never know. I mean, after all, he did take second place once at an MLG. Of course, that was the time that there were not that many Koreans, or perhaps not a single one. But still, uh, second place at an MLG, the one that did Jinro won, Dallas, I believe. It was long ago. It was. Long ago. <laughs> See a 15 <laughs> spawning pool over here for <laughs> Stefano, who's of course <laughs> our pink Zerg on the left side of the map, and MTWT21 being our red Protoss Dude, on the right side that. of the map. We already, we already no. introduced these guys. I didn't get that. We, get, we did, man. Maybe you we did could it. probably even play it back. <laughs> I don't want to go there right now. <laughs> My producer just handed me a note. He said that uh, apparently there's some audio issues, left side being a little bit too loud, and he says it's because when Kevin came in, he tripped over the cord, so... <laughs> That's this so is what happens when you show up late, man. So not true. <laughs> <laughs> I so hate you guys. Apologize for that. Uh, the NASL sound guy. That's it. Moving back to Europe. He is back, <laughs> but he is working on it. So. <laughs> you think it's the same guy? It is. It's Bob the sound guy. Bob? He'll, 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 he'll never leave, bro. We see a Forge already up for MTWT1. He's at, uh, ooh, he has a lot of probes, so now he's just going to drop a Nexus. I think he would just wants to delay the base of Stefano as long as possible. I'm a little bit surprised, man, that Stefano didn't answer like how a lot of Zergs do and straight away take uh, your additional hatch on another base. And that's no, what he does, he does right now. But now he does. A little bit later than I expected him to do. Made an extra drone or two. He's going to get these lings out. Uh, now, Stefano tends to play a very straight up style. He, he's kind of like, all right, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I dare you to stop it. And uh, I do anticipate, even though these lings aren't working on that pylon, I still anticipate him to, uh, to just take a third hatchery. And macro up. Ooh, those links are actually going to be in time. Uh, even if Ooh. he just runs them all by, it's going to be. He's got enough money for a gate, though, and he mm. does seal it off. That is a tight wall. Good job. Right might be able to. No, Ken is done, so he's not getting in there. So far, so good for TT1. Even gets a Zergling kill. Even gets a Zergling kill. First bluff. That TT1. Did. You know, we talk a lot about the Maybe guy. Maybe going to drop a gate. Yeah, that's what he wants to do. That's good pretty move smart. By Stefano actually catching that right in, the, right in the nick of time. I love that idea because when you know that the Zerglings are on the other side of the map, mm -hmm. it's going to take quite a while Long before time. Stefano will be able to take out that gate. Then again, we shouldn't forget that Stefano already has this base, so wouldn't be the end of the world, but it would be annoying. Now we talked about this. Well, actually, you and I didn't talk about this. I had this conversation with with Grubby, of all people. But uh, he <laughs> uh, he pointed out that the cool thing about Zerg's taking this this third base basically before the natural. Gonna cancel it. I, I think guess he's not. I think he's afraid that the moment he cancels it, that the Zerglings are gonna run by and he's gonna have to deal with them. It's gonna take quite a while before he can mine from his natural. So. Uh, but now TT1 is stuck with a really early dub double gate, which oh, used to be... Zealots, yeah, yeah, so maybe it's just part of his build. Could be. As I want to say, they used to do this for quite a while. I remember IPL3, that was the time that that really became popular. And I was like, hey man, that's so uh, good. But then... It's cool. It uh, cool. started to realize that it's actually really easy to scout, as we can see that we haven't got Overlord over here. I don't think he's going to be able to achieve all that much with Double Zealot, but 
Well, yeah, Stefan will have ample time to respond to it, but he still hasn't taken any gases, so he's going to have slow lings against Zealots. Uh, TT1, though, also hasn't started on any of his upgrades, so it's not like plus one's going to be done in any sort of haste. Now, as I was saying a second ago, one cool thing about taking your third so early is that you can get going on that creep spread very early. You can push that creep way out into the center of the map, making it much harder for like a two-base timing yeah, to deny cool. that third base. So that's one thing that Stefano definitely has going for him. He does have that third hatch building in his natural. Plus one is on the way right now for TT1, so let's see if he's going to follow it up with anything uh, real worth, maybe a six or a seven gate. Because, uh, I mean, this is not a super hard map for Protoss, I guess, to go on to three base, because everything is really close to each other. But uh, most Protoss players, uh, at least outside of Korea, do fear going against Stefano on three bases. You'd rather try to kill him on two, and that's hard enough. <laughs> yeah, Elfie pulled it off once at assembly, but was not able to <laughs> repeat the feat. 25 minute two base all in. <laughs> That's what it was. Uh -huh. That's the typical Elfie, bro. Only Elfie can do those. <laughs> Elfie. Kind of plays like... Because they come so late that you don't expect them anymore. Elfie's kind of like Goody, man. He he, br he brings you down to his level and he beats you with experience. Oh. <laughs> no, that's not nice to say. <laughs> oh, come on. No. Everybody says it in Germany. Yeah, in Germany. But we're not in Germany <laughs> anymore, bro. <laughs> the German fans are rejoicing because they're like, I know. <laughs> uh, one only went for two zealots. Perhaps he just wanted to scare Stefano into making some links, but... Uh, all the links that Stefano had were the links that he had originally, so that's not going to work. Of course, Stefano still has a really great, great view on this. He does see that plus one. Okay, right. I'm a little bit surprised, man, that we do not have a single Overlord over here that he didn't want to try to sacrifice an Overlord in a certain phase of the game uh, to see something, even though there's still that, not that really That could even be a mistake, Kev, because what? I mean, it's important that you that you scout. I mean, everybody knows this, even Stefano. <laughs> I like that, man. I think the internet will love that too, man. That's a really smart command. It's important that you scout. I yes. mean, come on. Uh, but but I mean, he, you're, abso you're absolutely right. The only overlord he has on this side of the map is in the natural. Now, it could spot this robo fairly easily, even probably without giving up the high ground. Do you no, think we're going to see, see it already. speed warp prism play over here out of TT1? Because he's getting a warp prism right now. He's mm -hmm. dropping the robotics bay as Maybe. well. How cool with that? Or maybe he just wants to go thermal lens straight away and harass a little bit with these warp Yeah, I think it's going to be sentry harass with... It could be a speed follow-up. I mean, you, you really never know with TT1. I love speed warp prisms. But, you know, if, if he's going to do a big two-base all-in, it's probably going to be with Colossus. Uh, he's at 56 probes already. That's actually quite a lot for two-base all-in. So maybe he just wants to... Uh, oh, he's getting high ground vision right now, so he wants to uh, finally kill this overlord. <laughs> Stefano getting the best out of that exchange. Yeah, sees the warp prism, knows everything that's going on, even gets into the natural and is going to see. Uh, well I think TT1 is going to try to take a, a third base after all, Ben, because he has so many probes and he's still building probes. Which Means makes sense. I guess if you're going to just sit on two bases, you don't really want to go past maybe 50 at the most. Yeah, four, yeah I would say. 48 is kind of the magic number. I agree with that one. A uh, couple more gates coming down from TT1 as this warp prism makes its way across the center. Of that. Ooh, and Zealot's going out at the wrong. same time. I really like this from TT1. He's going to make Stefano work. So many roaches in the main base, but that's okay. He doesn't have to unload those sentries. Let's see what these Zealots will be able to achieve. Uh, we do have a few roaches, or a couple, as you explained to me the other day. <laughs> well, uh, there's three there, so now it is a few. Mm -hmm. It's a rotty couple. <laughs> <laughs> Such a jackass. <laughs> Kevin argued for like five minutes with, with me the other day that a couple means more than two. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I said I know that a couple can be two, but I thought it could be more than two. <laughs> so then we looked it up, and I had to admit I was wrong. <laughs> a couple is always two. <laughs> <laughs> At least oh. one thing you taught me, Ben. <laughs> was about time after all the things I taught you. Like about Everest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like Belarus being part of Spain. Hey, man, it could happen. I, there's, there might be a small town in Spain called Belarus. No, yeah. I, I don't think that's, <laughs> that's fine. It's possible. Anyway, Stefano is at 150 supply right now, so he's looking steady as always. 60 drones against 60 pros with FTW TT1. TT1 taking out his own forge right now. Is he really going for this? Uh, looks like he is. Is he going for the full wall off? This is a really weird time for him to attack. It's yeah. like right at 12 minutes when Stefano normally maxes. So he's like, all right. Let's go, 130 supply against the max. And I think at 12 minutes you can have a better all-in than this one. I speak yeah, out of experience. Yeah, and he's walling back in. So yeah. this is uh, this is it, two base all-in, two colossi. He's got a lot of s the force field, so with yeah. perfect force field, you never know what could happen. Immortals are going to be super crucial, though, because we often used to think that colossus were the key out of those two base uh, timings, but no, he really needs immortals with this mix to deal with... Uh, Roaches and one immortals might be not enough. He, if he wants to be really scary, he needs double immortal. Stefano is maxed out right now. A couple of force field CT1. That army was not all that scary. Stefano's just gonna surround this man. This is really scary for Yeah, TT1. but then maybe force fields. 
Well, he's going to fight on the ramp. That's not where you want to be, Stefano. These uh, first force fields are pretty good. Sentries haven't gone down yet. More good force fields. Colossi really doing a great job. Some roaches from behind might pick off a Colossus, but TT1 microing very well. Does win this first fight. Yeah, Stefano's actually kind of low on gas, so he can't make that many more roaches than he has right now. He's at 63 probes. And TT1 really didn't lose a lot. If you take a look at units lost resource step, uh, yeah, 2,500 against 800. Only eight units and no sentries, which is what's really, really critical. Stefano will be able to max out once more. And now he has Tunneling Claw, so Force Field going to be much less relevant. Stefano already setting up his oh, positioning. This is and a pretty oh, big flank by Stefano. This is not looking as good. Roach is burrowing, coming right into the fray. The sentries are not going to last long. That's a full surround. Beautiful engagement here by Stefano. Colossi doing everything they can, but they die very, very quickly. That one immortal. He's going to do a ton of damage, but it just doesn't matter. Stefano's got more units coming out, and TT1 is going to have a very hard time sustaining this two base all in after losing all these sentries. He's still warping in units, though, and he's actually forcing Stefano to retreat right now, but this went so much better for Stefano. As we can see, he took out 2,000 resources more than uh, TT1 did. Yeah. And I really, Ben, don't you imagine if he had two more immortals? Do you think it would have made a change? Um, I, more think I think that kind of all in would have been better with immortals, just period, because uh, Stefano's pure roach man i mean i like i like colossus as well you need the colossus and by the way that was a super beautiful engagement by stefano that's uh, zerg oh yeah. art and it was even perfect it was perfect even me as protos can appreciate zerg art man that, <laughs> that was zerg art tt1 now decides okay i want to try to take a third but stefano of course not going to let that happen sentries immediately getting surrounded uh immortal dies very very quickly as well and this is looking quite grim for tt1 just stalkers against roaches gg out of tt1 and uh, that game Went about like we thought it would. Yeah, I mean, the TT1 going for a two base all in. A uh, little bit of a weird one. He never really got to do much with his war prism. I guess that's just really hard to catch Stefano off guard anyway with something like that. Tried to do something with those zealots. Work wise, he kept up for a long time. I think he made maybe made a bit too many probes because if you go for the two base all in, you really don't need 60 probes. Um, yeah, I mean, one moment it looked kind of okay. I felt in the start as well when Stefano almost wanted to fight off creep. He should have made more uh, offensive force use. He was afraid of that little army. Mm -hmm. While he had so many sentries, even if there would have been a flank, which he was not aware of, he could still defensive force use behind him. And then maybe if he picked up enough roaches, then the second fight would have gone better for him. But Yeah, I don't know. I, I Honestly, I just didn't like the all-in, like all man. It just felt... I love the all-in. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know you do, but it just didn't feel like the best way to all in Stefano, right? Mm. Um, I think uh, I think something with Immortals, more Immortals, maybe four Immortals, three Immortals, w one Colossus, yeah, maybe that would have been better. Um, oh no, I do agree with you. If you, if you s and he actually had a pretty decent scout because he scouted with the Zealots, he scouted with the War Prism, so he knew he was up against a very heavy uh, Roach Composite army. So mm -hmm. I think he could have dealt, dealt with it a little bit better, maybe... As you said, three, four Immortals, one Colossus, just in case Circling's reinforcements mm. would try to take out your army. Uh, could have been more scary, yes. Stefano did look pretty convincing there in that first game. Guys, we're going to take a very short commercial break, and when we come back, game two, Stefano, TT1.